Ochre is a term used by archaeologists to describe a soft rock containing iron oxides and is found at archaeological sites in Africa dating to 200,000 years ago. Ochre may have been used as a coloring agent, as a medicine, as an additive in glues, and as a sunscreen. However, we know little about how ochre was processed and stored. An exceptional archaeological discovery just published in Science sheds new light on this topic. An international team led by Christopher Henschelwood describes the excavation and detailed analysis of two ochre processing toolkits uncovered in the Middle Stone Age levels at Blombos Cave, South Africa. In 2008, a couple of toolkits were found at Blombos Cave in latest dating to 100,000 years ago. The first toolkit comprises an abalone shell with a 5 mm deposit of ochre, stone tools used for grinding and hammering, a fragment of ochre, and a small bone possibly used as a steering tool. We also found a seal scapula and a vertebra. The second toolkit contains an abalone with a similar layer of ochre covering the bottom of the shell and a napped quartzite piece covered with pigment. Close by lay a large lump of utilized ochre. The evidence suggests to us that during this period the site was used as a workshop to process ochre perhaps and was abandoned shortly after these toolkits were used. Dune sand then probably blew into the cave, covered the toolkits, and preserved them for posterity. We applied a number of analytical techniques to understand how the pigment was processed. Pieces of ochre were either rubbed against the quartzite slabs to make a powder, or chipped and the resulting flakes crushed with stone grinder. Spongy bone was also crushed and heated to extract marrow, that was added to the mixture together with charcoal and some kind of liquid. The mixture were then gently stirred. Chemical analysis indicated the mixture contained three different types of ochre, and we have shown that the toolkit were used more than once. How this ochre compound was used is not obvious, but the absence of resins or wax suggests that it was not used to make a glue or a mastic. We think it may have been used as a paint or to create a design. The recovery of the toolkits of Blombos Cave documents the first known instance for the deliberate planning, production and storage of a pigmented compound and for the use of a container. This discovery serves as a benchmark during the early evolution of the cognitive abilities of Homo sapiens in southern Africa. Mm -hmm.